Well, what is up, Mission Family? I'm getting so much better at the countdown these you times. Are. You so, nailed it. Man, uh, honored, got, <laughs> honored that uh, Mission's a part of, Mission Family is a part of your night tonight. And if you're catching up, watching this on demand, it's so cool. Um, the engagement that we've seen through the Mission Family and the core and all that stuff, it's been, it's been really cool. So uh, maybe we'll just talk a little bit as people are logging on and jumping in here. So maybe you want to walk us through like, baptisms a couple things we can celebrate yeah. since last last oh, time oh man it was so awesome like i love i love every time that we get to celebrate baptism uh the I, it's such a privilege if i can just like it's such a privilege when i get to be in the water yeah it's like because you just get to be in that moment with them and get to hear like we ask him like tell us what brought you to this moment and the vulnerability just in 20 seconds of what you get to hear in their story i'm jealous that the whole church doesn't yeah. always get to hear that. Yeah. But guys, it's just so powerful what God's doing in the hearts, minds, and lives of people that are experiencing and encountering him many for the first time or for the first time in a long time. It's yeah, unbelievable. I, I, I agree. It's one of the privileges, I mean, that we get to do. But we've also a lot of our friends at Mission have baptized people. Mm -hmm. I would just, Mission family, a goal for your life before you get to eternity <laughs> would be able to be in the water and baptize somebody that you led to Christ. I'm telling you, when you hear their story and you watch the transformation and you watch them accept Jesus, it is it will wreck you for uh, for anything other than that for the rest of that your life. That may be one of like the, so, our most favorite things. Yeah. Uh, like Getting to baptize an individual is awesome. I know for you and I both, when we get tapped on the shoulder and, and asked to move aside Love it. because someone, like a small group leader, a friend, a volunteer is going to be baptizing someone. That's the best. almost a bigger payoff <laughs> in my mind because I just, yeah. I know what that's like. That's just, there was an investment made. That might have been the one that they were praying for. Mm -hmm. Like it's them reaching their friends. It's such a cool thing to watch that. So happen. life goal. There you go. Hashtag life goals. Uh, be able to, and if you've already done that, you know, let's recapture that moment and do it again. So uh, for you to let's figure out who we can pay that forward to. I mean, another thing as we're just kind of catching up and looking back, uh, we started a new series called Better For It, which man, I am really excited for. I've been pumped for it. Um, but we started the, we're trying these things called Better For It workshops. So you maybe want to talk a little bit about what we're trying. Yeah, I, we're Good. We're taking a shot at just doing like 20 minute work. It's so funny. This is one of the things that like COVID allows us, right? Like you could do a 20 minute workshop. We would never do a 20 minute workshop in person. Like that, like all the work preparation it takes to get there. Child all, care. Yeah. All <laughs> of the details. We're like, well, now it's like, well, maybe we could just do it as short as possible. But what we're trying to hit at is giving real practical tools from uh, tying in from the weekend of ways that you can implement the things that we're talking about in a real like practical way. So like this last one was on replenishment cycle and just trying to have some practical tools of ways that you can proactively stay healthy and make sure that you don't ever approach burnout and operate from a source of fullness. Uh, and every week's going to be kind of like that. Yeah. Like Jody walking through new habits, got to create some habits. What has COVID afforded us that we don't want to go mm -hmm. through pain and not have any gain out of it because that'd be a shame. Well, what would that look like? And the replenishment cycle is a great, right. Great the workshops are really easy as long as the weekend teaching is good. So who's te are you teaching this weekend? <laughs> I'm teaching the next two. Okay. Don't oh, hold that oh, against me. Well, so. time will tell. Yeah. Time I'm will tell. Kidding. They'll be great. <laughs> it'll be great. Yeah, it'll be great. No, I'm actually, um, I'm really excited about the next two. So um, teaching. Yeah. I can't wait. Um, be fun. Because this series is going to be super helpful. All right, let's get to it. Um, yeah. Let's get to maybe some of the stuff that we're excited to announce and kind of roll out a couple things um, that we're pumped about. So Yeah, so just real high level, we, we kind of even said this in the post, we're going to talk about uh, some updates on gathering, and we're going to talk about some things that are coming up for students uh, and kids ministry uh, and a worship night that we're planning that you're not going to want to miss. So that's kind of where we're going. Uh, but real and quick. Easter. And Easter. That's a big one. That's kind of <laughs> I don't know if you know. It's one a of the significant probably the biggest Christian one faith, you could argue. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> kind of a big deal. Uh, we, we also want to talk about our last family meeting and the decision that we made and how we ended the meeting anticipating questions and didn't get any questions yeah, and I, didn't get to share everything that probably we should have shared. Yeah. So, yeah. so we moved inside clearly. We've gone in for the 6 p.m. Yep. for the last two weeks. Uh, um, Saturday night was the 6 because of the Super Bowl. Um, who saw that coming? Oh, wow, man. it's amazing. And then Sunday was 6 p.m. And so this coming Sunday, we'll go back to the 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Um, so one of the things that I, when we got done last time that I wish that I'd asked you um, is to go like, well, how did we come about this decision? Like what, what got us there? Because most of the time we get questions and we're fully open to answer them. We didn't get a ton of questions and I wish I would have asked because that would have been yeah. a normal thing for us to do at the family meeting. Yep. So yeah, how did we get there? Yeah. So, and I think this is such an important thing to layer on all of the conversation we're going to have tonight. Uh, th none of this should be interpreted as an opinion on the virus. Right. We think it's very real. 
many of us, most of us, it. yeah, most of us have friends that have it or, or, or had it or navigating it. Like it, we take it, if you've ever come to an in-person gathering here, you hopefully have caught, I probably shouldn't say caught, but you've probably seen how serious we take it, right? I mean, we are very, in, in the indoor gatherings, even more so, like the, the worst thing that could happen for us is that we would be reckless and it would cause us to, to lose the opportunity together like that would be the worst thing so we take it very very seriously so just keep that in mind as we're talking through all of this now at the same time i think we've seen more and more i would say friends of ours people that are around mission who are struggling they they are not doing well Mm -hmm. uh and it's helped us kind of even learn the difference between attendance and engagement so there are some of us who are attending in person or online and we're fully engaged in this season, meaning I'm still connected in community. Right. I have relationships around me. I may even be serving or volunteering in some capacity. But, but that replenishment cycle is working because yeah, not yeah. much has changed in COVID or right. whatever reason you've made some adjustments in COVID to keep yourself in a great spot. Yeah. And you've got structure around you that's helping you stay healthy or at, at least not fall off the tracks. So that's great. But there are a number of us who are disengaged. And we may even be attending from time to time, online or in person, but all the other structures around us are gone. Our our social support system is gone. We're working remotely, and so we're not around people. And there's all of these things that over time have created really like hard mental health situations. Mm -hmm. And- Because we're going on a year. I mean, we're coming up to a year. And it's been a a long year. Yep, and we feel, we felt a deep conviction to make options available. So online is not going away. And man, if that is your preferred venue and you can engage there, then we are so glad that you are doing that and don't want to stop providing that. And we don't think it's less than for you. Right. And at the same time, we've been struggling because we didn't have a good solution for people that needed and desired, I would even say desired to be indoors. Uh, And they would say needed to. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to like, I may not understand the need and why that's different than a parking lot. It just is for some people. Yeah, for whatever reason, they neutraled or throttled back engagement because they were assuming this would be over quick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no. You know, so all of us, I think we thought we'd be over quick. And then the layer curve. on top of that, the last yeah. thing I'll say, layer on top of that, we know we can do it safely and responsibly. Like we can stay below capacities and we work with churches all around the country. Yep. And depending on the state they're in, some of them are allowed to gather indoors. And so we just watched them do it mm-hmm. and watched like how safe it was and had great protocols in place. And you got to wear masks and there's no hospitality because you can't take your mask off to drink. It's really doesn't feel too much different than going to the grocery store store for an hour to get groceries right. and you know, I'm touching, I'm not touching anything here. Like, so we know we can do it safely. So when we made the decision to go indoors where we, uh, what we probably should have said was we're doing it in violation of the order at that time. Right. Now it's a mute point now because the Supreme court's ruled in the moot state has mute? it moo. It's a cow's opinion. Moot. It doesn't matter. That's a friend's reference. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so now like as of now, just in case you're wondering, like Friday, the Supreme court ruled the state changed their guidelines and the county has said you can meet indoors at 25% capacity. Right. Uh, so we're, we're good now, but we were making the decision and we didn't articulate that, yeah. that the move indoors was going to be in violation of what our county health order was yeah. at the time. I'm just so. good to be able to go back and go, um, yeah, just, I wish I would have asked it last time yeah. and I did. That's so, great. Yeah. yeah. So now it's been amazing the last two weekends to talk to individuals and I don't know, maybe let even let us know in the chat if you've come to, like, I'd love to know if you're here and you're, you're online. I w- we would love to know how you are engaging. Yeah, let's, so let's do it this way, if you don't mind. Um, and we've got a 15-second delay, so if we don't engage quickly on that. So are you um, inside? Are you parking lot? Are you online? And they're all great as long as you're in that engagement thing, not just attendance thing. And chances so. are, if you're online right now, you're engaged. Yeah. So <laughs> that's true. Sorry. Uh, maybe not. No, you might not be, but it is like the person yeah. sitting next to you may not be. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so type that in because we would love to. We would love to know that. Um, but and and I think the online has been great, and we've gotten such good feedback over the last ten months around that. Right. The parking lot's been good too. We're two weeks into the indoor thing, and I what I'm hearing over and over again from people who are walking in the doors for indoor is, man, I missed this and I didn't even realize how much I needed it. Right. And I, they can't even articulate why. Like why, versus whether they were indoor, whether they were outdoors or online, there's just something about it. So like if you're, if you're needing a nudge, let me nudge you. I'm not convincing you. We're not trying to get anybody to change what they're doing if they're engaged. Um, but I would love to equip all of us to be able to be champions of the vision 
that there are three ways for you to attend and fully engage at Mission. Online, parking lot, indoors. And I want all of us to be the carriers of the word engagement. Yep. So not just are you attending, but if you think of anyone in your small group, someone you served with, people you used to see around Mission or someone you haven't seen in a while, reach out to them and ask them, hey, how are you engaging at Mission these days? Right. That's, a, that's not an intrusive question. That's a great question and maybe even a pastoral question because what used to happen, I mean, you would serve together. Yep. You'd, you'd see each other in the lobby. You'd know if you hadn't seen some, somebody for a month. You're like, I maybe... Maybe I ought to check in with them. Yep. But now it's COVID's jacked all that up. So we're not even sure how. So if there's people that come to mind that God brings to mind, I very much think that he would bring those people to mind. Yep. It's good to go like, hey, how are you engaging at mission? How are you doing? Any way I can help you? And all the three of those areas, online, uh, in the parking lot, in in the room, all those things count. Yep. <laughs> like we're not, we don't have a favorite of those in this season. We want to help people engage. Right. So. And I, and if I'm, I feel like a like a, a tipping point. Meaning, like I I feel like so energized and excited for where missions going, uh, and this next run between now and Easter, and even where we're going in the fall. Like I regardless of what happens with COVID, I think this year is going to be amazing mm -hmm. uh, for all of us who are participating in ministry around mission and the impact it's going to have in our community. It just so let me, two things with that. Um, there are new people engaging on all those environments every week still. That yeah. means that we're inviting as people. Yep. And it also means there's something about um, the way that we're doing life together that's attractive that God is using. We baptized 20 people in the midst of COVID. Right. Like that freaks me out in all the good ways. I'm yep. like, how did you... Well, how did you even find the, right. the online platform? Well, yeah. if I can brag on our welcome team, yeah. like they've doubled their volunteer team since November. Yeah, good on you. And if you're serving, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you need a place to serve and you're comfortable in the online environment, the parking lot environment, or the in-the-room environment, there's a place to serve yep. as well. And if you haven't met Clint, uh, he's awesome. If you maybe haven't even met Sarah, because she came on board right before she's, COVID. She's just okay. She's amazing. No, like, she's yeah, awesome. an awesome she's team. Awesome. They're doing a team meeting, I think, on the 21st. Uh, so if you're on the team, you'll be getting information about that. But so, so cool. So so here's here's what we're doing. Yep. So this is the big thing that we wanted to talk about, because we want to make sure that we gather, when we gather, we gather responsibly, um, both as a church, but also as the mission family. And so we don't want to make these too long. So um, starting February 21st, um, so not this Sunday, Valentine's Day, just heads up, fellas. Okay, there you go. And not this Sunday. This Sunday we will be a 9 and 10.30 on our online platform, 10 a.m. in the parking lot, and 6 p.m. in the room here at this Sunday. So that's as, as it was normal a couple weeks ago. That's what's going to happen this Sunday. On February 21st, we're going to keep our online platform the same times and same way. Uh, then we're going to move the parking lot service to 9 a.m., so 9 a.m. in the parking lot. Then we'll have an 11 a.m. in the room, and it'll have the same. Maybe we'll describe that in a second, yeah. what that would look like. And then we'll have a 6 p.m. Um, in the room as well. So starting February 21st, online is the same. Parking lot moves to 9 a.m., and then we'll have an 11 a.m. that's inside and a 6 p.m. that's inside. And maybe talk about, the, describe the, the room in here, what it looks like. Yeah. So if you've not attended indoors and you're just curious of like, how are we doing it and what does that look like? Uh, we open the doors to the building uh, generally about, I think it's 20 minutes before the service, maybe give or take. It's it's right. We don't open the doors to the building until we're ready to actually We're not seat seeing the room. We're seeing the, the building. building. Yes. Yeah. Until we're ready to seat you in the auditorium. So we're, we're not allowing people to like congregate in the lobby, right? now uh, you can congregate outside that's our lobby that's our lobby yes. we've moved the lobby outside and so uh, we don't do any hospitality on the front end which is weird for us because we are all about grab a cup of coffee and hang out so it feels weird uh, and it's not our preference but it's the safest way to do it so uh, you come indoors and then we seat you uh, so if you don't like it, get over it. We're going to seat you. Uh, sorry, but compassion. it's like, <laughs> a lot of compassion. Like, come on, if that's the biggest hurdle you're facing these days, you got a good life. So, uh, we will seat you, uh, all of the rows. It's every other row, which we've measured out is six feet. Uh, and then we seat you to, and we try to leave three empty seats between each party, which is six, over six feet. So like we're six feet front and back, side to side, and then we're seating you so that we can control that and we're filling the rows as they come in. And so that determines our capacity. Capacity is kind of a range depending on how many are in a party and all that, but right. it's well below 25%. Well below. We're not going to hit that based yep. on how we're seating it. And then we've got the lobby, uh, which can seat 100 people out there, all spaced out and roll up doors open. So it's extra ventilation. So that's another option. Uh, and then you're not 
really touching anything. We're not passing things out in the room. You're not opening doors. Everything's kind of done for you. And then when the service is over, we dismiss you and you got to leave the building and we have hospitality in the parking lot. Right. Afterwards, you can hang out just like you're allowed to uh, get in a safe, well-circulated environment, or you can take off if you prefer that too. Connection point right. is outside all that. So that's kind of what it looks I, like. And I even think our facilities team has done an amazing job. We They were prepared. Yeah. Of, they've been prepared since the beginning of COVID to we be able to- foggers. Yeah. Like legit, so, like what the movie theaters have to do to make their environment theater? safe. Theater? Theater. Theater. Theaters. theaters. Okay. Depends no, on but so like fans? even if you've been in the parking lot and you've seen them bring the chairs, we, we sanitize and fog the chairs after every use. We sanitize and fog the surfaces in here after every time. The the, the bat restroom facilities, like they've done, killed it. They've yeah. done a great job. Yeah. So. And so it's, when we say like it's a safe environment, like it's not, it's not a wink and a nod. That's like, right. no, we, we really, everything's sanitized and we really have tried to think through this. Now, we, the service times may change because what we are, you know, in the old, old what else days, is it's like pack the room out. How many more right. seats can we add? Now it's like, no, we got to stay within like a safe threshold. So when we hit a certain number, we will add services in order to keep the number in the room low. Yeah, it's important for us to, so. for it to be responsible. We want to yep. be we want to be responsible stewards of influence and also people that we feel like God has placed for us to serve. Yeah, so that's a preemptive like give us flexibility about changing service times because right. what we're trying to solve is keeping it safe. Absolutely. So, thanks for your grace on that ahead of time. Yeah, and um, here uh, if you've got questions that are percolating, um, we'll give some time at the end, and or you can just get them in there, and we'll do our best um, to get to them um, and be able to answer anything. We're not afraid of the questions. I promise you, we would love questions if you have them. If you feel like it's a question that you wouldn't want to ask mm -hmm. on the platform, I totally understand that. Please email info at missionventura.com. That goes where me and Jim will be able to respond. We want, we'll respond very quickly because we, we really love questions. Yeah. So you want to talk about Easter and then, yep. and then uh, I'm really excited to talk about some kids and student stuff. So what's yep. happening for Easter? So just a heads up for Easter, we're, we are going to, um, it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a family experience. We want to, if you were, or anything around Mission Christmas or heard about Mission Christmas, we want it to be that kind of fun and hype. Uh, so to do that- Is it we'll, going to snow? <laughs> probably not going to snow. Oh. Uh, what we're going to do for, for Easter, the current plan as we know it, is going to be at least three services, um, at least two in the morning and the 6 p.m. So we're kind of playing with some times, but there'll be three services at least on Easter Sunday. Um, they'll all be outside in the parking lot. That'll enable us to create the best family environment and ha not have to worry about restrictions and, and spacing- Away, or turning people yeah, away you, and all, yeah. all that stuff. So it's going to be a family friendly, fun festivus of all faith. F words. That was careful. Yeah. You got to be. Yeah. So, uh, but honestly, just per you start thinking about that, that level that, uh, that mission Christmas was. And when you were like, man, hopefully if you attended, you're like, wow, this is great. And feels like we are coming back a little bit and maybe Easter, maybe the, be the beginning of somebody's faith journey that way, or somebody that has been kind of disconnected or not engaged that they would kind of dip their toe back in the water then. Yep. So, so for real, like I, like if you're praying and I would hope that we all are, hopefully you're praying for your one at one still, but also like listen and pay attention to like when God God prompts those little like, hey, where is so-and-so? Or like, man, I used to serve with them. I wonder how they're doing. Like your your prompting is an opportunity to like reach out and maybe lead to their re-engagement. And right. Easter may be one of the easiest ways. Hey, I haven't seen you. Maybe even since last Easter, we're going to be at this service. Would love to reconnect. Like, just be paying attention to those things and then act on them. And again, sure. don't if you primarily need to engage online, that still doesn't take you off the hook for inviting online or inviting yep. to the different environments that mission offers. So we're not saying that you, we're not trying to guilt anyone to come from online Correct. to the parking lot yep. or the parking lot inside. So don't hear that. But we are saying that the invite or check in, in on engagement, we do want to guilt you. On. Right, because their answer might be, "I'm totally." engaged online right and the worst thing that happens is you just reconnected with someone you haven't seen in a while right which is for introverts you know sometimes is the worst case all right so the thing we've been kind of trying to solve or at least take ground on is like this is hard for families yeah like the next gen i mean i'm i am a family <laughs> and we have kids and it's i mean it's hard it's well, you, really you, difficult you mentioned the staff and maybe even worth saying here kind of like your shout out to moms yeah i was in an environment i was realizing holy cow um, and not that dads aren't amazing, 
go, go, go on your dads. But moms that have been working full-time or part-time in this season and being full-time mom and educator trying to fix the Zoom and work from home while kids' internet is crashing, but your internet's fine. Like, I think we need to just for a second just say thank you mm-hmm. and oh my goodness, we see you. And if, if you haven't felt that um, from our church or from the people around you, I'm so sorry. Um, so it's sometimes I think people, we think, people think we think things and we right. don't say them. So it gets left unsaid. So moms, good on you. If and it uh, doesn't matter if you're working or not. Now you've got 17 full-time jobs. Um, so in COVID. Seriously, with a no break. And so yep. some of what family, what we've seen with families is uh, we as adults are fully aware how hard this has been. And some of us are, we're all handling it different, but we as adults generally have more social structure than our kids do. Uh, we, there's other places we can go for social interaction, but our kids and middle school, high school, elementary age kids or younger, their, their social environments comes from the structure usually of school or recreational activities. Right neither of which are happening right now or been happening and school is just online, but they're not. So what we've seen over and over, I, think, I mean, I just think about it. Teenager right now, uh, 10% of their life that they can remember has been affected by COVID. Yeah. Like, so they, like, it's just jacked with most, like a 10% yeah. of their life. It, it's messed up all their structures. And so teenage years generally aren't the easiest anyway. So like, if I think about my right. teenage years and I layer this on top of it, <laughs> oh, good grief, I'd be in trouble. So then my parents would probably be in more trouble because they'd have to deal with me. But what we've seen is parents are going, please, like if we have something for my kids, right. like I would, and the parents may not even be comfortable engaging in person, but man, if they can get their kids around people, they're in. And so we've seen middle school and high school numbers at student ministry equal to what they were a year ago pre-COVID, right. which tells you something about what students need and parents are recognizing it. So mission students is back, middle school, high school, they're meeting every week on Wednesday nights on campus in Thursday person nights. or Thursday nights. Sorry. Thank you. Thursday nights uh, in person on campus, masked up, safe protocols, all of that, but it's happening. So help spread the word, get students back. Uh, if they're comfortable doing that, parents are good with that uh, in person, but we've seen tons and tons of students needing that. And then kids is the same thing. And by far uh, more complex uh, than the younger you get, the more complex it gets uh, with physical distancing and all that. So our kids team is going, we got to try something. And so they're going to try something and it's coming up in March. It's going to be March 19th through the 21st. So a Friday night, Saturday morning, Sunday afternoon, weekend deal for third through fifth grade. And it'll be a drop off event indoors, probably in the lobby. Uh, They're still working through all the details, but what they're trying to solve and what they're offering, man, I think it's going to be so great for those third through fifth grade students and maybe for parents uh, to know that their kids are being invested in Mm -hmm. by the church in this way. So, And and I would say if you don't have third through fifth graders, you probably know someone who is that does and would love an opportunity to be able to, this may be an invite opportunity that's helpful because we're going to be able to help a family out hopefully. So, yeah, so that's coming and it's going to be great. And we're learning a ton through all of these things. And the last thing, uh, and then if you have questions, feel free to throw them in at any time. Like you don't need to wait till the end. Like you can populate them in the chat. So we make sure we can catch them at the end. We're also uh, planning a worship night uh, indoors on the 23rd. I think it's a Tuesday night. February 23rd. Uh, it's going to be awesome. I think we haven't done one. We did one in the parking lot right. when we did baptisms right. uh, back in the fall, but haven't done a worship night for a long time yep. indoors. And so that's going to be yep. an awesome I, experience. Also, I, I should have said are this. are we live streaming that one too? Uh, to I think be... we've talked about maybe putting that one as a live stream also. Okay. So if you're online only in the season, you can still engage with it. So okay. in fact, I, I think TD's back there. Is that right, TD? Are we doing it online? Are we going to be that's the, right, that's, that's the, the plan. plan. I got two right. thumbs up. So uh, if you're online, the worship night will be an option for you to attend as well. I forgot to mention um, on Easter, on those options that we're going to do, that's our next public baptism service as well. So if that's something that you or somebody in your world is contemplating um, to be able to baptize on Easter, it's probably a good time to go forward <laughs> with yeah. your public with your faith. So, yeah. So, all right. So if you have questions populating, we're wrapping up here. Uh, and, and as we do, I just want to reiterate just everything we're saying, like, man, we... We do take this very seriously. Yeah. So as you hear us pushing or potentially even sounding like we're challenging people towards indoors, know that if you're engaged online or in the parking lot, we're not talking to you. <laughs> so like we are talking to people on the fringes that are drifting or have got habits that are taking them away and yeah. they, they need a challenge. I've got men that I'm in community with 
that have needed just challenge in this season or remind just more of a reminder of what they know they need. So that's who we're speaking to. So don't if it's triggering guilt or shaming, that is not that's not we're it. not talking to you. Right. <laughs> so let yourself off the hook. Online's great. Parking lot's great. But we also are going after a demographic that we know needs this third option. So yep, absolutely, 100%. I couldn't say it any better. I and, mean, I would try, but I can't. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you need anything, uh, our care team is still growing. And it's, man, I still love what we're doing with this pastoral support team. Yep. So if you need anything, let us know. Info at missionventura.com. Uh, we'd love to reach out and provide whatever you need in this season to, to be your church in just, this time. Just a reminder, the app is your best friend. And the new website, missionventura.com, is an amazing way, simple way to be able to push. You can point people there. It's so user-friendly. People can find out anything they'd want to know about mission. They can kind of see it before they come check it out. You can invite people from there. It's like it, if you haven't looked at the new website, go look at it in a way that you then maybe think about who you could send that to, who you could invite, use to invite, or use that to invite, and all that kind of stuff. So. Yep, Any, I'm, I'm just typing in uh, the retreat dates from middle school and high school real quick. Okay, they are great. the 5th and 6th of March. So yes, we'll put that in the chat 5th and 6th of March. So middle school is one day and high school is another day. Yep, so. Friday is high school. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, I don't know if there's more questions coming. So we'll hang for about 15 seconds to let uh, catch up, yeah. see if a question comes in, and then we will uh, let you go. Yeah, and I really do, guys. Thanks for like jumping on and making this time. This was a little bit longer than we've been going, yep. uh, but it's been super helpful to know that we have a place to engage all yep. of us. So thanks for doing that. All right, Mission Family, um, if there's something that we're gonna, we need to answer later, we'll answer it. We love you guys. Much love. Peace.